Hi everyone, and welcome to this video presentation where we will introduce you to the January-February issue of the European Business Review, which I'm proud to say has been devoted entirely to the Center on AI Technology for Humankind at NUS Business School. My name is David Kramer, and I'm the founder and director of the Center. The main goal of this issue is to zoom in more closely on how man and machine will become collaborators and co-creators in the future of business. To study this kind of collaboration, which I refer to as the new diversity, where humans and non-humans populate our future workforce, we will use a human-centered approach. What this means will be elaborated upon in this video, where we've invited the authors of the different articles in the special issue to briefly explain their research question and findings. My article looks at a contradiction. The contradiction between firms publicly promoting agility, flexibility and empowerment of employees, while at the same time monitoring and quantifying those employees through what is called people analytics. The objective of people analytics is to collect large amounts of digital data about the workforce and transform this data into statistics, patterns and predictions with the help of AI. In my article, I show that the contradiction between worker empowerment on the one hand and worker surveillance on the other hand can be understood through a historical analysis of managerial ideologies. I'm really excited about the topic of our article here on service revolution. I feel we're at an historical moment right now. We had the agricultural revolution, the industrial revolution, and they brought us mass manufactured, low cost, high quality goods. And now we are at the brink of the service revolution, which I think will do exactly the same. This is why I'm so excited. I wrote with my co-authors this book here on intelligent automation, and I really think the service sector has the most to gain from it. It's because everything is coming together right now. The technology from deep learning, machine learning, cloud, AI, biometrics, uh, ro robotics, you name it, it's developing so fast, it is getting cheaper, better, smaller, almost on a monthly basis. And this is exactly what we need to produce services on scale. And the most exciting and fastest where this will be implemented is what we call information type services where we don't have to touch and move physical things. Think of call centers. Think of any type of information or processing. This can all be done by smart te technology really, really quickly. For example, you have information counters at the airport. They take headcount and retail space are big and they're inconvenient because they are only in one terminal at one level and you have to walk a long way to get there. I promise you in a few years from now, you have a, have a holograph beamed every 50 meters. That holograph speaks 20 languages and can give you all of the answers you want. Where's the toilet? Where's the GST rebate? Where's check-in? Where's customs? Uh, this will be the fastest shrinking job category going forward. So I believe that when we look back in 50 to 100 years from now, that people will say, this is when the service revolution started. This is when we got an immense boost in productivity and standard of living for all of us again. AI has already changed the ways large enterprises do their business. However, 
small and the medium enterprise has not been able to enjoy the benefit from the recent rapid development of AI technology yet. This is mainly due to the lack of data and talent in SMEs. Through the synergy of AI and blockchain technologies, we are able to build an open, collaborative AI market for SMEs to address the challenges in the data and talent so that SMEs are able to improve their business operations greatly. As a behavioral scientist, I study how consumers react to being served by robots. After talking to many consumers and researching them, I realized that one thing is very important for them. It's not exactly how complex the robots are or how much AI power they are, but really how the robots appear to them physically. So in my work, I look at how a robot, when it's approximate human features, consumers actually are much more likely to say that they're satisfied by being served by the robot. Most importantly, we find that as a robot approximate human features, they tend to be forgive more when they make mistakes to customers. And in this case, we actually find that consumers even find those mistakes amusing to them as well. So practically speaking, our research suggests that organizations, companies, should really design the robots to approximate human features as much as possible to ensure that customers are being satisfied when being served by robots. article looks at what managers and organizations can do to effectively integrate AI into their work processes, specifically those that require creativity. We outline how effective human AI collaboration looks like in the context of creative work that leverages the strengths of both humans and AI, as well as draw up recommendations for managers on how to facilitate AI-integrated creative problem solving. In short, we propose a model of human AI co-creation to inform managers on how to stay competitive and innovative in times where AI increasingly becomes a serious co-worker in organizations. investigates to what extent human managers are prepared to accept the inclusion of machines in managerial processes. Specifically, we search for the optimal balance between human and machine input. And across various work situations, we found that human managers wanted, on average, 70% control over the job whereas machines were allowed up to having 30% control. So, these findings indicate that humans have no problem with delegating some part of their job to machines, as long as the majority vote stays in human hands. In this interview article, the notion of a human-centered approach to AI is the central theme. And I emphasize its importance by introducing the idea that non-reflective technology development may create a situation where rather than man, machine may become the end user. A human-centered approach to AI development attempts to ensure that the technology that we create serves humans. It promotes its, their efficiency, but without compromising their well-being, happiness and inclusiveness. We do see, however, that today this is not really happening. 
The first challenge that we see is that the ones designing the new technology are focused on innovation only, and they don't worry too much about the social consequences. What the new technology means to our society, to our human identity, it's not on their priority list. And it's no surprise. The way they're managed and trained focuses very much on developing the best tech possible. Mark Zuckerberg is a great example of this. When the Cambridge Analytica case emerged, his first response was, my only responsibility is to develop the best platform out there. What happens to people using it, that's none of my concerns. And I call this phenomenon the innovation-only bias, where we see that ethical and social responsibilities are sacrificed on behalf of innovation. The second challenge that we see is that many business people see AI solutions only as a cost reduction strategy. They can solve their business problems, they think, with using the newest AI technologies and in a cheaper way. But this creates a kind of mindset as well that we've created now a situation where we seem to be prepping people to serve machine rather than the other way around. 